Welcome back to my channel, I'm Satnam B, and for today's tutorial we're looking at how to create a Lego stud effect within Photoshop. The first thing we need to do is open up a new document. For this we're going to just use a standard HD size, so 1920 by 1080 p Next we need to open a new layer and fill it with any colour, and convert this into a smart object. This will allow us to keep this document as a sort of template which you can keep adding imagery to and maintaining the effect without having to actually manually apply this effect to each new image. Now that the layer has been converted into a smart object, all you've got to do is open it up and delete the actual contents. From here, you paste in the actual asset you want to work with and save it. We now need to open up a new document, which will be a slightly smaller one. So for this, we're just gonna use a simple 80 by 80 pixels board. We need to set the fill color to be a 50% black this can either be done by adding a new solid or just by changing the background color within the artboard settings. If you double click on the background layer, it converts it into a regular layer, which we can then apply different effects to. The first thing we need to apply is a simple bevel and emboss. So for this, all I'm using is a simple inner bevel with a smooth shading and with a depth of 85, a size of two and a soften of two. Then for the shading angle, we want to keep the angle quite high so to about 90 degrees and then the altitude to about 20 degrees. And then for the actual highlight and shadows, we wanna keep them both at 90. We can reconfigure this in a bit if it doesn't look right. Now opening a new layer, we need to then set up our central guides to help us draw a circle from the center. So for this, just simply use the rulers and just drag in a ruler to 50% on both the horizontal and vertical axis. Then using the shape tool, press shift and alt and draw from the center outwards to draw a perfect circle. You want to keep this to roughly about 60 to 70% of the size of the square. Next, we're going to apply some effects to this. So clicking the layer and opening the effects panel, we need to firstly turn down the fill blending mode all the way to zero. So we don't actually see any of the original fill. We just want to see the effects. So the first effect we need to turn on is the bevel and emboss. From here, I decided to play with the settings to find something I liked that matched the stud surface of a Lego brick. From quickly experimenting with the different controls, I found that keeping the light source to the same inputs as the background worked best and having a simple inner bevel with a hard chisel technique and a depth of about 80%, a size of two and a softener two worked well again. The difference with this part is we're going to apply a drop shadow, which will allow us to create this sort of more harsher extruded depth between the background and the actual stud itself. Next, we need to apply the drop shadow. For the drop shadow, I went with something quite simple. So for the blending mode, it's just a standard multiply to about 60%, the distance to about six, the spread to about 14, and then the size to about six. And then lastly, we wanna change the contour curve to this sort of sweeping effect. This just allows it to create a more less dispersed shadow and it creates that more harsher lighting that we're looking for. And then what you've got to do is just click OK. The bevel on the background looks a bit too severe compared to the actual stud now. So all we've got to do is just jump into the bevel settings and just reduce that to about 40% and then click OK. Next, we need to select the entire artboard and define it as a pattern by going to Edit, Define Pattern. Choose a name and then just click OK. Now back into the original comp we created with the smart object, we need to add a new layer and fill it with the background color. We also need to then turn off the fill blending option as we are just gonna be using the effects again. So now within the effects panel, you need to turn on pattern overlay. We need to choose the newly created pattern and then change the blending option to either linear lighten, soft lighten or hard light, depending on the actual image you're gonna be working with and then reduce the scale to 25. The opacity for this layer needs to be about 40% and then just click OK. So as you can see on the actual layer itself, it started to look like one of those flat plates in Lego. So now the way to get that Lego stud block effect is to actually create a pixelation. So we just need to pixelate it choosing mosaic, set the cell size to about 20 pixels. When confirmed, this looks like a Lego piece of art. So again, as it was created using a smart object, if you were to insert text or anything on the original layer, you can pretty much create a Lego effect on any subject matter. So for instance here, we're just gonna quickly make 
some text with the word Lego and just add in a white background. And then when you save it, it automatically updates. I've put my project file on my Gumroad. If you want to download it, all you have to do is go over to my Gumroad to add a zero to the payment field. Then you can freely download the assets. The link will be in the description. When developing different assets, I like to see if I can use them in different software packages. This is the same when I try to develop different filters or visual styles. I like to see if I can implement one strategy and bring it into another. So for this, I'm just experimenting with this Lego filter to see if we can apply it into an animation effect. So I've got this time-lapse video in the background, which basically shows my process of trying to create the same filter for the Lego texture using Adobe After Effects. The idea is using a mosaic effect to then replicate the pixelation and then using the overlay, which was the pattern we created in Photoshop. When you begin to stack the different elements together, you can actually create something that looks pretty much the same as the design we've mocked up in Photoshop. A little bit of trial and error allows for this process to actually work and then you're able to seamlessly drag and drop different visuals into the composition without having to manually readjust the entire effect. I would recommend trying to do some of these sort of exercises like this where you try out one technique in one software and then try to replicate in another as it develops your understanding of how the technique works and allows you to work quicker and more efficiently. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, please like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps the channel to grow. Thank you.